what we're looking at here are four separate video shots of the large-scale shake table test we did in Japan. The test was conducted at the E-Defense facility, the largest shake table in the world located outside of Kobe. What's significant about this test, it's the first time that we put together all the pieces of this rocking pane with the energy dissipators, and the test really demonstrated that under live earthquake shaking, how the system responds, holds together, and dissipates energy like we designed it to. Well, whenever you're in a building under an earthquake, you're in under a big earthquake, you're in for a very scary ride. A lot of typically lateral deformations to the building. Now this rocking frame is a little bit different in that since it also it moves laterally, but it also rocks upwards. If you happen to be standing next to the rocking frame, you're going to feel the floor around you kind of being lifted up because, again, the column is rocking upwards, and, and that lifting up might be on the order of uh, three or four inches in, in some of these extreme earthquakes. So what's new about these rocking frames is that they, they under a large earthquake, they will rock, but through this, these high-tension, post-tension cables, that after the earthquake, it will come back to a plumb position. Um, so there'll be no residual deformations in the, in the overall building. And, and also, the yielding and energy dissipation will occur in these specific fuses that can be easily replaced after an earthquake. Well, the fuses in our buildings, the one that, that we focused on, that actually we developed here at Stanford, it's a steel plate that we use uh, water jet cutting to cut uh, what look like butterfly-shaped links in it. So when you see the fuse deform, it's kind of like fingers like this that are diffused, that are moving up and down. They're yielding the steel, and by doing so, they're dissipating energy. So the, the key thing that these frames offer is minimizing the damage, uh, and that damage which there is, making it thinking about it ahead of time so it's more quickly and economically repairable. And, and the idea is, aside from the minimizing the cost to repairs, is getting people back into buildings as quickly as possible. So avoiding building closures, and when repairs are necessary, getting those done quickly so there's less disruption to the occupants and the broader society.